Reading through Philip Lindsay's stats is really just insane. He's averaging 6.1 yards per carry on the year. In his last three games, his average yards per carry were 7.2, 7.9, and 8.3. The 8.3 being the most recent game he played against Cincinnati. In 9 out of 12 games he's played, he's averaged over 5 yards a carry. If he keeps up this pace, in his next 11 carries, he'll have over 1,000 yards. Meaning that he would have 1,000 yards in just 165 carries, which has to be some kind of a record. Another crazy thing about him, he's yet to have a game with over 20 attempts. His career high was 19 attempts last week against Cincinnati. While I do feel like Denver should be rushing Phillip Lindsay more, especially when you're in the playoff hunt and don't have the best quarterback, I do feel like that when they use Phillip Lindsay, they use him very well. And this play is a good example. At first, they're going to set things up like it's a rush through the right B-gap. However, that's just a fake. The receiver at the bottom of the screen is going to head to the middle of the screen, which is going to clear out the bottom of the screen. And since Denver's blocking as though it's going to be to the middle of the screen, this is going to draw Cincinnati linebackers in. And since Denver has a tight end on the bottom of the screen, this is now going to make it very difficult for Bengals defensive end Michael Johnson to get over and contain Philip Lindsay, meaning that no Bengal is going to be near the bottom of the screen. Lindsay can easily break outside, and with his speed, he's able to pick up about 10 yards. They were in a terrible spot going into this play with a first and 26. So now that it's the second and 16, it now gives them a chance to potentially convert on further plays. Although it's not just Lindsay's speed that makes him effective, it's also his acceleration. Like on this play, it's going to be a halfback delay, and Denver's going to have their center and fullback move up the block. And the play really just works out perfectly. The Bengals were expecting pass, and it leads to a huge gap where Lindsay can run through, and he has a couple of blockers in front of him. Though what really makes this play work is Lindsay's going to first fake as though he's not running the football. As you see, he sort of just stands up straight. This really helps sell that Denver's going to be throwing the football. A lot of players couldn't do this, because by the time it would take them to get the full speed, a defender could potentially get past their block and make a tackle. However, Lindsay seemingly instantly gets to his full speed, and it leads to a pretty easy first down for Denver. So we know Lindsay's fast, and we know Lindsay can accelerate quickly. So that brings us to how smart of a runner is he? On this play, Denver's going to have their right guard and right tackle move up the block Cincinnati linebackers. This is going to leave Bengals defensive end Jordan Willis completely unblocked. It's again a play that's using Lindsay's acceleration to their advantage. They don't have to worry about a defensive end making a tackle because they know Lindsay's going to just blow right by him. However, what's really cool about this play is it really shouldn't have been much more than a 4 or 5 yard run. Lindsay, while running full speed, looks over to his right and realizes that nobody's in the area. Now, if he fully breaks to the outside, Willis can make a tackle, so he kind of has to half break to the outside, half run forward, but it still leads to a 14-yard gain. It's a play that a lesser back would have lost some yards on the play. However, Lindsay was fast enough and smart enough to not just pick up some yards, but to pick up the first down as well. While all those plays are fun, let's talk about his home run hitting ability. But first, in order to hit a home run, you have to have a home run swing. And that's what this play is for Denver. It's a halfback toss, and they're going to pull left tackle Garrett Bowles to the outside. Meaning that assuming everyone makes their blocks, there should only be two Bengals that can make a tackle. One of those is Nick Vigil, who has two options on this play. What he should have ended up doing was instantly sprint to the top half of the screen. With Lindsay's speed, he's not the kind of guy you can chase down. You pretty much have to have a good angle on him. However, you're going to see Vigil instead run sort of towards the middle of the field, which maybe would have been okay against some backs, but against a quick back like Lindsay, it's just not going to work. The other player that could have brought him down is defensive back Jesse Bates. Bates is expecting Lindsay to go to the sideline. However, Lindsay couldn't have really done that anyways, as perfect is in the area. Really, Bates should have been about right here. Once again, it's the kind of play that against a slower back, you would be able to come back from. However, when playing a guy like Philip Lindsay, you have to be just about perfect. And any slight mistake, and he can get by you and take it for a touchdown. If there's a player you'd like to see me make a video on in the future, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. We like sports and we don't care who knows. From shooting hoops to the Super Bowl. We like sports and we don't care who knows. Football, 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 tennis, hockey, golf. The game is starting, everyone is here. I got my snacks, my friends, and a beer.